These are pretty. I can't wait to start working with them. Good morning everybody, it's Steven here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog number 119 for Monday, June the 10th, 2019. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, the weather here was really nice this weekend, but as I look out my window right now as I make this, it's raining again. We've had a lot of rain in the last month and I hear we're not unique. A lot of places in the world, uh, especially down the United States, are having all kinds of horrendous weather. Um, I guess tornadoes and things like that too. So a little rain we can put up with. So let's move into what I've been working on. So behind me is not finished yet, but this is the pineapple quilt that I had shown you the blocks uh, for about last week. Well, I've got them all sewn together now. It uh, still has to have the borders and I'm going to put on uh, mitered borders for this and uh, today I'm going to my class that this quilt comes from and I'm going to have the instructor Donna there uh, show me how to do mitered borders. Now I have done mitered borders before once on the uh, quilt that I call the dynamic quilt or the Roman tile quilt that was the one in black and white um, which is a UFO at the moment because I haven't got around to quilting it yet. Um, but I want Donna to show me her method because I know it was different from the method that I did. But I'm pretty happy with this so far. Um, there's a lot of points to match up and I did match them up to the best of my ability. Uh, but there's a few that aren't quite dead on. But because this quilt is so busy in its design, you really can't see that. So I'm not going to point it out to you. As far as you're concerned, this is perfect. Okay, and I'm going to believe that. Um, also, I've been busy sewing and um, we did get invited to a July the 1st party, which is Canada Day for us here uh, in Canada. <laughs> yeah, makes sense, right? Um, so I did show you this, I think, that I made. It's a, a table runner uh, with the Canada Day theme. Oops, wrong one. There it is. There it is. I've made some accessories to go with this. Um, so here's the table runner again. Pretty sure I showed this to you. I know I have an idiot quilter vision about the uh, clip about this, but there it is. Now this is a table runner or it could be a wall hanging. It's, you know, the recipient's choice. And um, to go with that, I did make, let's put that stuff behind me. I did make a couple of placemats as well. Uh, slightly different in the design of the stylized maple leaf uh, from what was on the table runner. I found another pattern I kind of liked better for that centerpiece. It's actually called a bear claw, um, but it looks like a maple leaf. So I did that. So I made two of those and I just get carried away. I love accessories. And I made a couple of Canada Day napkins use the same oops sideways use the same material but I embroidered on here the maple leaves and the word Canada so all together it's a nice little hostess gift or in this case host gift and um, like I said before I like making things for people and giving them to them so uh, hopefully they'll like those um, yeah they don't give them back to me I'll use them Okay, so that's what I've been up to in the past week. I'm also working on another quilt, which is not a class. Uh, it's actually one of Angela Walter's uh, designs, and it was a free downloadable pattern. So it has 140 half square triangles involved in it, but I've got those all made. Now I need to lay it out, and I need to lay it out on the floor because it's a fair size. And because of the way the colors go in it, I want to make sure that I get you know all my squares in the right order. So I'll probably lay that all out and then um, take a picture of it and then I'll label everything so I know what I'm sewing that I have things in the right order. So that'll be coming up soon. Okay, so let's move on to the YouTube channel of the week. 
This week's YouTube channel is called Scrappy Wife, and this is a lady that I stumbled upon uh, some time ago, and I watch her videos every now and then. But this one has a special appeal for people out there that do Bible journaling. Now, I have to admit, Bible journaling seems to me like something that might be a bit interesting to do if I was a Bible reader, and I am not, although I certainly have a lot of respect for the Bible. Um, I do have a problem with marking up a Bible with pictures and things like that, although... Having said that, I suppose you could buy yourself another Bible, and I think there are actually Bibles that are now printed with journaling in mind. But she doesn't just do Bible journaling. She also looks at other craft techniques um, and supplies as well. So she has uh, an interesting uh, take on using your uh, journaling, your mixed media supplies and things like that. And her professionals, or professionals, her videos are fairly professionally done. So, if you're interested in Bible journaling, journaling or just checking out uh, another set of techniques, then try out Scrappy Wife. Okay, so you will find the link to the Scrappy Wife uh, in the show notes below, as well as uh, the link to the latest Stephen and Walter Live. And yes, this week, if you didn't catch it, we were able to go live. YouTube, co YouTube cooperated for a change. We didn't freeze up. We did do it slightly different in terms of the technology. We used our iPhone instead of the iPad this time. And mainly because, as I mentioned on Stephen and Walter Live, the iPhone has a faster processor and more storage space in it than my iPad, even though my iPad is one of the newest iPads. Um, still, the phone is more powerful. So we thought maybe that would help with, you know, avoiding freeze ups. Anyways, whether it did or not, or did or didn't, um, is to be seen because we didn't freeze up. So that's a good thing. So I'm choosing to believe that that has solved the problem. I don't know if you can ever solve the problem with YouTube. Um, they're constantly changing things and not letting you know when they change things and whatever. <clears throat> And if it sounds like I've got a fro frog in my throat, I actually, I don't know what it is. I have a bit of a cough. Um, it's up here. It's more in my throat, but my eyes are a little itchy too, so I suspect it's allergies. I never had allergies as a kid that I was aware of, but as I grew older, I guess I've developed them. So I am taking Claritin um, with it, and that seems to help a little bit. Um, but it's just, I feel okay. It's just annoying, it this cough that happens. And I may happen in the middle of all of this too, so I warn you now. Sorry about that. Okay, so as I said, Stephen and Walter link is down below. Um, the link for this week's book is down below. And there's a new Idiot Quilter up, if you haven't seen it yet, episode uh, 45, where I do a project update. And I'm using my new system that I think I've got figured out now in my sewing room. All this technology, so little time. So all those links are below. So that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. And funny thing, it has to do with technology. Technology has been really pissing me off quite a bit lately, as you know. we uh, Our television set is coupled with our Alexa. And for some reason, Alexa has a mind of her own. And she will, while you're watching a YouTube video, suddenly switch the stereo over to a music station. And Walter thinks he's got it figured out now um, and what has happened, but it was quite annoying. It makes you really start to wonder whether all those conspiracy uh, theories around Alexa are, are actually maybe really true. Like she is listening in and the AIs are going to take over the world soon. I don't know. It's just kind of, well, it's annoying, but when you really think about it, it's kind of spooky. So say, having said that about AI taking over the world, I am no longer on Facebook. Okay, boohoo, yeah, cry me a river, my life is over. Not really. Um, what has happened is, I got compromised again. Went into Facebook yesterday, bang, comes up. Your account has been disabled. Okay, I can't get into it. I had this happen to me about three weeks ago. And I don't know if I told you the story or not, I probably did, but essentially I had to create a whole new account. I had to send out friends requests to people that I have on my Facebook. Some of those 
uh, some of them confirmed the friend request. Others sent me an email saying, did you really send this? And I had to explain that I'd been hacked. Um, and yes, and my account had been disabled. It was a real pain in the butt. Well, I am not going to do that again. As of today, I'm officially off Facebook. It will feel a little strange, but I, I didn't depend on Facebook because quite frankly, Facebook is stupid. I mean, when you think about it, um, do I need to see a lot of pictures of people's food, what they're having for dinner, what beer or wine they're drinking, or do I need to see a lot of little videos that people are sharing and spreading across Facebook world where they show a cute little puppy playing with a cute little kitten or inspirational wall hanging type signs that say things like, you know, um, you're wonderful, you are the light, you know, let it shine, uh, make everybody happy, blah, 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 drop dead, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if you saw that or not, but you just saw my finger probably come to the screen because speaking of technology, it must have heard me because his nail says there's an update for my operating system on my iPad. Yeah, can't you see I'm busy? Really? That's just rude. AIs, they're, they're rude. I mean, no manners with an AI. An AI is artificial intelligence, okay? Just in case you didn't know what I was talking about. Anyways, back to my rant here about Facebook. So, other things about Facebook that I hate. I hate the fact that people are constantly trying one man up shit. Ship, I mean, I didn't mean shit, I meant ship. You know, the idea is, hi, we just got back from a five day cruise. We just got back from Italy. We've just gone around the world. We just dug a hole in the backyard and buried a dead body in it. You know, do I care? Do I need to know these things? No, I don't. But then you see, Sally says she did this. So Jane or Sam come on and say, oh, but they did this. Oh, and they say, but did you see this? No, but did you do this? And it's just like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and everybody's life seems better than your own on Facebook, doesn't it? And I have heard that this is actually a serious problem because it does give people a lot of stress because they feel they have to keep up with the Joneses or that their life is meaningless because they're not going to a fabulous brew pub uh, every weekend to try a new craft beer or they haven't got the latest gadget that someone else just bought or whatever. So Facebook is useless. I think when it first was started, and I've seen movies about this, it was meant to be a way for people to stay in contact with their friends. But why then do I have over two or 300 friends on my Facebook? I don't know these people. I don't even know how they became friends because they're friends of friends of friends of friends of friends. So when did it happen? Like I can count my number of friends probably on one hand, really. These are people I consider good friends, okay? And we're in contact without Facebook. So why do I need it for that? Now there's groups. Oh yes, people start up all these fun groups and there's thousands if not millions of groups and I've belonged to a couple of them and I join them and occasionally I check them out if I'm really bored. Because again, I don't find them all that useful, at least the ones I belong to. Um, but I have a feeling none of them are really that important. I mean, really, if you want to start a group, I don't think it should be Facebook. If you're starting a legitimate group where you have people that are members of your group and you all share a very uh, common interest, you know, that something there, you're a specialized group, then there are other ways to create gr groups. On Facebook, when you create a group, you can be bombarded by requests to get into your group all the time. That is if it's been set up so that they have to request. There are some groups that are fully open and they have thousands of people on them. And the more people you have in a group, in my opinion, the less value the group has because it's way too much information. I mean, the group may have started off uh, as a good thing, you know, uh, a small group of quilters, for example, there's lots of quilting groups, um, want to get together, share patterns, share ideas, you know, uh, share, you know, techniques and things like that. That's great. But when you start getting into hundreds and thousands of people in the group, you can't keep up with the information. And if you ever tried to do a search for a specific piece of information on Facebook, 
it's not easy. You can go in and use the search engine, but pinpointing down exactly what it is you're looking for is a bit of a nightmare because there's way too many, too much information for one thing on there, good and bad, and way too many interconnections. Things just, you know, you start here, but you can go over here and then it branches over there and then it goes over there. So it's mind boggling. The other thing I don't like about Facebook is the amount of advertising that's on it. I mean, you're reading down, you're trying to catch up with what your friends have been saying over a weekend or something, and you go down a few messages and bang, you have this huge ad right in your face. Some of them have video. The video, unless you've turned that feature off, automatically starts to play. I don't need to see it. Um, there's all those sidebar ads. There's also stuff in the sidebar bars telling you, you know, here, you, this is maybe someone you know, um, you know, send out a friend request and the whole bit. Th on the screen itself, there's too much happening on that. It diverts your attention all over the place. So it's kind of like a, an over sensual, sensual, sensory overload as well. Um, so the first time that I got hacked and disabled and I had to reset up an account and of course I had to use a different email uh, account for it, I actually had to go in to my uh, internet provider and create a new email account just for that purpose. Um, I'm, that email I'll never use but I had to set up for that. I had to put in new password, I had to put in all my information, then I had to send out uh, all my content was gone but I didn't have that much there and I don't really care about that content because it wasn't much of anything, you know, a picture here and there, maybe a couple of pictures of food, what I was eating, um, you know, because that's important. That's really, that's life altering that, you know, that all my friends want to know what I'm eating at any moment of the day. No, but I do know a few people on Facebook that think that they need to share that all the time. Um, but as I was saying, there's it's too much sensory overload um, all this stuff happening on there and um, yeah really um, there's the privacy issue as well with Facebook and right now you know that governments are getting involved in this discussion uh, now with Facebook and Facebook isn't showing up to the days they're supposed to show up in courts or to appear bef before you know legal authorities to explain how they control their privacy. Facebook has been hacked on more than one occasion uh, and those are just the ones we hear about. I'm sure there's a lot more we don't hear about. I kept my personal information to a minimal minimum amount in, in Facebook. Um, I did not have my address and my telephone number. Um, I did not have my email address in there either. Um, oh and that's the other thing um, about Facebook. They have Messenger in there. Uh, the lazy man's way to, to talk to somebody is basically what that is. Um, if you need to talk to somebody about something, you know, and if you want to keep it somewhat private, even though supposedly me the messenger feature is private, I wouldn't trust it. Um, send them an email. Okay, you can argue that emails are not necessarily secure either, and you're right, but they're more secure uh, than I think Facebook Messenger is, especially given the fact how they're being hacked. So, and one of the other things that really get my goat about Facebook, you know, one of your friends sends you this little thing that says, if you're truly my friend, you will read this all the way through and then you'll click on like and you'll share it with people on your Facebook. And it's always some weepy little philosophical thing or it's about someone, you know, so someone had cancer or whatever. And if there's ever, if cancer's ever touched your life or someone you know, share this and the whole bit. And it makes you feel guilty if you don't do it. I don't do it. The hell with it. I'm I'm not sending that stuff around and bothering other people, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that. But it's this this fake feel good thing that Facebook has created. It just why it is a waste of time. So good riddance, Facebook. I'm not going to put in the effort to reestablish another account with you. I don't need you. I sent out an email to all the people that I know and said simply that. I am no longer on Facebook. If you need to contact me, give me a call. Remember that ringy dingy, you know, not a text message. Give me a call or use email. Okay, either one. I think that's plenty of ways to get a hold of me. If it's important, you will find a way to get a hold of me. Uh, if it isn't important and you can't, 
Who cares? Simple as that. So down with Facebook. I hear a lot of people are going away from Facebook anyways and migrating over to Instagram. I'm not going into Instagram. I'm not getting into that whole thing. I'll stick to YouTube, okay? All right, so enough about Facebook. Let's go on and talk about products. Well, I did buy a few things and you're gonna see these again probably next week in my craft segment of my vlog. But um, I bought some more, because I have used these before, I craft flowers. Now, I really like working with these little flowers and they're one, they're inexpensive. Um, you know, if you buy something from Prima, uh, half the number of flowers, it'll cost you twice as much. These were $5.99 for this, for the smaller box, $3.99 Canadian. And I love them. They all come apart. Uh, like you can separate them into single flowers and things like that. And, um, these are what I'm going to use next week. You'll see it on one of the explosion boxes for decorating. So that's all I've bought this week. Nothing else, really. Although as the week goes on this week, there's probably going to be some purchases, but I'll come to that in a moment. But right now, here is the next installment of my... Um, uh, oh, sorry, no, before I get to that. Okay, I get myself confused. Have a little coffee. No, what we're going to talk about next is Book of the Week. Last week I talked about genealogy and using it in, in scrapbooking or how to present your gene, genealogy information in a way that might be more attractive to people who aren't genealogists and may not have shared the same intense interest, interest that you have in family history. Well, this is another book that talks about this too. It's called Heritage Photo Journals. And even if you're not into genealogy, but if you've got some old family pictures or things like that, that, you know, are just in a box and you want to get them out so other people can see them, then this little booklet has a lot of really good information in it uh, and how to do it. And I think they even talk about, you know, preserving things because if they're really old pictures, they're probably starting to fade or crumble a little bit or whatever. But some really neat ideas. Now, this book came from, is published by a company called Pine Cone Press. And here lies the problem. And it seems like every book that I staked for my stash, there's a problem with it. And sorry about that, but you may find these somewhere. I did a search and you could on Amazon you can get it but it's amazon.com not amazon.ca usually when I talk about Amazon I talk about it .ca simply because I'm Canadian and so you know talking in Canadian prices but you can find it on amazon.com for about eleven dollars and three cents and that would be American didn't say anything about shipping though so have no idea if there's free shipping or whatever with it um, you might be able to find it. Well, I looked for it in used and I didn't find any, but I did go to the Pinecone Press website and to see if they were had these for sale. They don't seem to have any books for sale anymore. Um, I don't know if they were taken over by another company and just kept the name because they do have crafting stuff, but they didn't have any books, um, on there at all. And so... I don't know if you really, really wanted this book, you could probably reach out to them, you know, and say, hey, you know, do you have this book somewhere laying around covered in dust that I can purchase? But as I said, you can find it on Amazon.com for about $11.03 American. What did I pay for it originally? I have no idea because there is not a price tag on this. And I have a feeling, I have other books by this company and um, they uh, actually they have an email address I see right in the back uh, info at pinecombpressbooks.com that's I, whether that's still in existence or not I don't know um, but I have no idea I probably ordered it directly from them at one time but anyways it is a good book if you happen to see it somewhere you might want to look through it pick it up okay so now that takes us to what I was talking about before the iCraft explosion box in this installment I'm showing you the final embellishment of what I now call the steampunk box 
So now I'm going to do some final embellishing of these little boxes. And I'm going to do this one first. And this particular box, as you remember, I did with torn up uh, vintage like style papers. And we'll just open it up in here. And I aged everything using distress inks and oxide inks and that kind of thing. So I'm thinking this has got sort of a vintage steampunky sort of look. So I've gone through my stash to find some things. Um, I found these two boxes of what's called paraphernalia, which come from Vern Industries, which is actually, if you know Mike Deacon, it's his partner, Ian's uh, little company, and he makes these cute little gauges and things like this. Um, his stuff is really interesting. And so I'm thinking some of these might look good. Um, so I'm just going to put these off to the side put them out here so I can see them because if I tuck them back in the box I probably will forget all about them Let's set those aside and then of course if you're doing steampunk what do you think of you think of gears so I've got this little bag here of various wood chips so I'm just going to go through here I know I've got some gears in here so I'm just going to pull out the gears. It's kind of like a whole little cut corner thing, so that might be good. Put those over there. And also I'm thinking maybe some of these little hearts. There's another gear. There's little, some little corner pieces here might look cute. Another gear. Um, I don't know if there's anything else in here that I'm going to want to use. I don't... The little hearts might be fun in spots too. So I might pull those out. And was that a ladybug or something? I think that'll do from there. These are bird cages. They might like look kind of cute on it too, but I think I'll stick with what I've already pulled out. I probably don't need a lot of things, but I do intend to do a lot of layering on the outside of the box so i'll get just get rid of these out of our way i really don't have a definite plan in mind uh but um whatever will happen okay here's some tim holtz bits and pieces some belt buckles those might be interesting on the edge i'll Leave out the brads because you don't use brad. Brads, these little clips. What else do I got here? Some of these uh, little face plates. They might look good on the front as well. I've pulled out some Tim Holtz, um, what do you call them? Big chat and small talk words. I found this that says history, tradition, cherish, memory, family. That might work. And then I pulled out, of course, and you know how I love these. Tim Holtz's paper dolls. Um, they're always fun. And then a couple of Tim Holtz's ephemera packages as well that are vintage looking. So I have a fair number of things here. And um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is going to figure out what's going to go in these little drawers. And I'm thinking here... Two little mini albums um, could go in these. And let's see, what size do I need to make them? I think these are three by three, the drawers. They are. So two and three quarters by two and three quarters would fit nicely in there. So I'm going to see if I can find some. Um, I'm going to look for Tim Holtz paper that I've got. And I do have lots of that. And uh, I think I'll make a little tiny mini album. I'm just going to do it as a as an accordion fold kind of thing. So I'm not going to do that on camera. I'll come back and show you the end result. So I've created this little booklet, and I'm going to show you how I created that in a couple of seconds here. But this little booklet will fit very nicely into the drawer of this box, just like that. And I'll show you what it looks like inside. So I have this little ribbon as the enclosure. And I'm keeping it sort of vintage-like. So I had this ribbon that's got this little white line along it. I thought that worked out pretty good. And I just took a piece of Tim Holtz cardstock. And I just cut one that's about two 
by three quarters uh, in width and almost 12 inches in length and just did a fold. Um, I used my scoreboard for this, a fold at every 2.75 inches and it just folds up like an accordion. Simple as that. And it fits right into the box. It's a little smaller than the drawers themselves. And then I embellished it. So what I did was I found some more of Tim Holtz's paper that had these. Let me show you the paper. This is what the paper looked like, except it was 12 by 12. And I just simply cut out uh, enough of these little squares to put on the inside of each of these pages. Just open it up here. There we go. So there we have each one of these in here. Now I went over the edges of the uh, album itself and each of these little cards that I've put inside of it with some black ink just to age it up. And I did these on both sides. I also added some of Tim Holtz's small talk words uh, just as something, maybe as a theme. Someone could put a little picture in here put a little uh, journaling in here, whatever they want. And on the back side, the same. There's more places to put pictures. And I did secure the ribbon on the back page. I used my Gorilla Glue for this. And then I put one of these over top of it and that just makes sure that that's going to stay put. And on the cover, I just added one of Tim Holtz's uh, little paper dolls as well because I love those and I think it's very vintage looking and with the ribbon it's just a simple enclosure do a simple bow just like that and that'll drop into the drawer so I'm going to start making another one of these for the second drawer and I'm just going to show you what I did. So I've already gone over the um, edges of this piece and folded it with some black ink and I did the same with these little cards and really I'm not getting too complicated in how I'm sticking these down. I'm just using my tape runner. You could use wet glue. You could use um, Gorilla Glue. You could use double-sided tape whatever you have, whatever your fancy is. And I'm just eyeballing it. So I've got sort of a border because these are a little smaller than the actual pages themselves. And I'm not getting too uptight or concerned about how straight these are. I mean, I'm trying to keep them relatively straight and even. And I'll do these two inner spots first because I want to leave the back part uh, free to um, use as an anchor for my ribbon. Just trying to see the writing on this, see if there's a right side to this or right way up. And then for the ribbon, all I did was just fold this up, took a little bit of my Gorilla Glue, and just put a line of it in about the center of that back piece. And then just stuck my ribbon down, making it relatively even. I will be trimming the ribbon afterwards. This Gorilla Glue dries fairly quickly. Oops, except when it's stuck to my fingers. And just take another one of these. And I am using Gorilla Glue on these because I do want this. There's going to be some stress put on this when people open and close it and tie it up. So I do want it to be well reinforced so it doesn't pull away. Just hold that down for a few seconds to let it get a grip. And on the front cover. <laughs> yeah, it, it always figures, doesn't it? Um, 
this should have been the front cover. I shouldn't have put the ribbon on that part because then these ones in here, when I do it on this side, are going to be upside down. But you want to know something? I don't think it really matters. It's not that noticeable. So we're just not going to tell anybody, right? Um, so I'm going to use another one of these. I think I like that one. Again, I'm just going to use my double-sided tape for this because this will be good enough to hold these together. Put the cap on my Gorilla Glue so it doesn't dry up. And let's see, we're going to need another Tim Holtz paper doll on the front of this one. And these come in various sizes. So um, here's one, bunch of kids. Hey, I think that one would work. I don't stress out over exactly which ones I'm going to put on the covers. Let's get these ones picked up where I'll have paper dolls all over the place. Okay, and with these guys, I'm going to use a little bit of Gorilla Glue on them as well. Mainly because they are sort of printed on a glossy type of paper and uh, the Gorilla Glue will hold them a little better. But again, it's whatever you prefer. And now on the inside, I want to put some words like I did on the last one. So grab my small talk words here and I'm not that concerned about what these say. And they're already sticky, so I don't have to glue them. So that one says, own your dreams. They're all very um, sort of gen generic. They might inspire somebody to find pictures or do some journaling that goes with those. That one said, be original. This one says, be fearless. And live in the moment. And on the back, I want to put something across there a little longer. Hmm, this one's good. Be in love with your life. And there we go. We've got another little booklet for the other drawer ready to go. So let's just tie a bow here. Oh, I'm wondering, I should maybe put some words up here. The other one, if you'll notice, already had on the little piece of paper that goes here, where to go, and I thought I'd leave that as a title, but this one doesn't have that. So, oh, this one's good. Attitude is everything. There we go. So let's tie this up. Just trim our ribbon a little bit. And so there we have the two little books, booklets that are going to go in the drawers inside the explosion box. Now, let's put those aside. And now comes time to decorate this box on the outside. Now, one thing I'm looking at this right off the bat is I definitely think I need to go around the edges with some black ink. I think that'll just give it a little bit more of a definition. Yes, this makes it look a little bit more vintage style. And same with the drawers. I don't know if you can see this. I think I'm popping out of the shot here.
Definitely gives it a more vintage look. And I think I should do that on this piece. I'm not sure why I didn't do that uh, when I first aged this box. But yes, this definitely gives it a little bit more of a vintage look to it. Okay, so let's deal with the inside first. So since this is for what pictures or things like that, I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more of my trusty paper dolls from Tim Holtz, lay them out, and I think I'm just going to put them in random spots. Now what I can do is I can leave when I stick these two down I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Gorilla Glue but I'm only going to stick these down on one side so they'll serve like a paper clip. So you could slide something over the edge of them and they'll act. Oops. Okay. When you get Gorilla Glue on your fingers and you touch paper, <laughs> guess what happens? Paper sticks to you. Actually, I'm having a little trouble getting this to stick. Gorilla Glue sticks everything. I'll just hold this down for a second. We're going to do the same with this one over here. Just putting it on the edge. Hold it down there for a second or two so it takes hold. Okay, we'll let those dry. Now I have this underneath piece and this above piece, which I think I may just leave just as they are, but I'm wondering if I should stick anything. I don't think I'll stick anything on here, but these sides, when they close up, or maybe they don't need anything either. Maybe I'll just leave those blank too. Now, I do have a couple of these little cards left over, so I could just take these and just stick them under there. Actually, my thing I'm going to do is get out my corner rounder. I'm just going to round the corners of this. Just for some variety. Now that means I've just taken some of the ink off on those edges, so I need to do a little re-inking. Probably enough residue on this to just do it quickly. And there is. And just slip it under there. This one under there. So then person has more surfaces to put pictures or to um, add some wording to them. And I see I've got a little glue oozing out here. So just take my finger and wipe that off because I do not want it to stick. Okay, so that's the inside. Now, outside. What do we want to do with it? Well, let's look at my ephemera pile. I'm just going to put these paper dolls over here to the side for a second because I will come back and use those, I am sure. So, I have got some of these little wooden corners, these hearts. More hearts, more corners. And then, of course, I've got the gears. Now, let's just open these up. These are Mike Deacons. These are not Tim Holtz, this particular package. These are laser cut. And they're corners with gears. And I'm thinking, let's see how they worked size-wise. Yeah, I think they would look really good. 
right there. But now the question comes, do I want to color these or make them look more metal? Actually, I kind of like the wood look. I could, of course, emboss them. I could put some embossing powder on them. But I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to try and rough them up a little bit with some black ink and see how that looks. Kind of grungy. That's kind of the effect I want. Yeah, I kind of like that. I'll do this one as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's see here. Figure out where the front of my box is going to be. I think it's going to be right there. Just gonna put the lid on it for a second. Now, this could be a problem because I wonder if I dare try, if I leave that open, let's go over top. Hmm. Makes the box lid kind of tight. Okay, could I take these off a little bit? Could take off that top gear. So let's see. Fairly easy to cut. Now, if I put that right there, will that give me enough clearance? Yes, I think so. So I need to just put a little black ink on that so you can't see the cut mark. And now the question becomes, oh, that's not the way I had it before, was it? No, it wasn't. I actually had it. Did I have that? Yeah, I did have it that way. Okay. Still just touching the edge of that box lid. But actually, that's okay. So, get out my Gorilla Glue. Now, wait, before I do this, do I want to put something else on here? Yes, I do. And I want to put it, do I want to put it forward? Or I think it's behind, and I think, okay. This thing's going to keep opening up, so I'm going to get a little paper clip and keep it closed. solves my problem. So I'm going to take a little Gorilla Glue. No, I'm not yet. I'm not using the Gorilla Glue yet. I'm going to grab a paper doll. She's too big. I like the fact that these paper dolls do come in various sizes. Ooh, this little guy. It's like he's got his hand up. No, that's not going to work. But it might work like this. Okay, I kind of like that idea. Looks like he's got his little hand. Again, though, the box lid is going to be a problem. It might fit just underneath it, though. I think it will. Okay, that'll give it a dimensional effect. I could raise them. Okay. Uh, I do like layering. And... I'm thinking here, little guy and his parents. Maybe somebody else. Little dog, boy and his dog. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then I think I put a word thing over the top. So let's see. I have some here that are a little bigger. Here's one that says thoughts, understanding, wishes yourself, remember, 
Remember, that might be good. I'm going to put that one right up here. Now the box lid's going to cover this, but that's okay. It'll be like a little extra hidden message when the box is open. And let's let's glue down these other bits. So again, Gorilla Glue, because this is the outside of the box, it'll get more handling. And I'm definitely going to use Gorilla Glue on the laser cut wood piece. This one I'm going to have to hold down for a bit. So I want to get a good hold. And then this little guy. Now, do I want to take him, pop him up more? I think he'll be fine. I don't think I need to raise him any higher. Him to look like he's resting his arm on this gear. And his little dog. Does it just need the glue on the dog's legs? Okay, so this gives me an idea of what I want to do, and I want to put something on each side of the box on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back and show you the final product. So I have finished embellishing the box, and here's what it looks like. Now this is the top. So what I did with the top was I put one of those Tim Holtz little, I don't know what you call them, um, label um, embellishment. Uh, on the top, attached it with a couple of brads, and put uh, another word, uh, what do you call them? Small chats or whatever sticker in here it says blessings. And then you can see my sides. And I put a black ribbon, same ribbon I used on the little books inside, all the way around the uh, edges of the top. And um, where's my front here? This is my front. So on the front, I've got some of Tim Holtz's people. These guys, if their hats are a little bit cut off, but that's just as a surprise when we take off the lid. And some gears over here that I had uh, darkened with some black ink and added a word chip. And there's another hidden little person in here. All will be revealed when the lid comes off. Same here. And same here. So you take off the lid of our exploding box and open it up and it all opens up like this and you can see we've got little places here to put things and I didn't add any extra embellishments to the sides here of these and then we have in the little drawers we have our little booklets that you saw before that all open up and you can add things to them so I think this is kind of cute but I do have two more boxes. Uh, let's get the front. I haven't decided which part I like to be the front on here yet. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Whatever the person who gets this can do it any way they wish. And my lid just goes on here. It takes a little time to get used to it. And there we have it. Well done. So I have two more boxes, as I said. So in my next uh, segment, I will decorate those and we'll do something a little bit different. Because if you remember, this kit came with three 
different colored boxes. So each one I have done the background different. So I'm going to do the embellishments different. And so that brings us to events in the past week. Uh, my mother is getting dentures. Okay, that may not sound like the most exciting thing in the world, but for my mother it is because she, her teeth are horrible. What she has left, she doesn't have many. And so the denturist, I think that's how you say it, came in, took a look, did some, made some impressions the whole bit to make her teeth. And I think he's supposed to go back and see her today. And they've already sent me information about everything. Uh, they seem to be very efficient. Um, the price was good. I mean, I was expecting I could pay up to about $10,000 for these, but really it's only $3,000, $3,125 is what it came out to. Now I think that's pretty good. My mother doesn't have any insurance um, to cover this. So, you know, and I told them that. So I don't know if I got a better price because my mother doesn't have any insurance or what, but, or that's just the going price for dentures. I have no idea. I've never gotten dentures before. But anyways, um, I think this is a good thing, but of course, I know my mother's going to complain about them. Oh, they don't fit right. Oh, they make my mouth sore. Oh, this or that. Or I spit them up and threw them across the room. I don't know. There'll be something. I know there will be something. But anyways, it's all part of for her, for her general health. And that's why. And she said she wanted them. I mean, I didn't twist her arm about it or anything. It was totally up to her. And she said she wanted them. So hopefully she will make them work. We'll see. Um, okay, so we were supposed to, Walter and I were going to take a long arm class this past weekend on Saturday, but on Friday I got a phone call from the lady who teaches this class and she asked if we could uh, cancel it and book it for another time because she's getting ready for the Canadian Quilt Show in Ottawa. And, uh, and she does run a long arm business, so I guess she was like taking some of her equipment up there and she needed time to, you know, get it all organized. And yeah, I get it. Um, and I said, sure, not a problem. And to be honest, we didn't really feel like doing that class on Saturday because Saturday was a really nice day, um, out, you know, and you just want to be out and about when the weather's nice. Um, so we rescheduled it for later in the month on a Thursday, which is probably better than on a weekend. That's one of the, the benefits of being retired. You can do things during the week and not have to worry about the fact that you have a job because we don't. Um, so that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we did have our guild's annual meeting. Uh, we're done now for the season, for the summer. We reconvene uh, in September. And yours truly is now the secretary of the guild, officially. I think I mentioned it back a few weeks ago that my name had been put in the hat, but nobody else was running against me, so I'm it. So now I'm on the executive, so we'll see how that all works out. And I've been secretaries for organizations before, so it's not a big deal. Um, you know, you just take your laptop, take notes, bang, you're done. So that's okay. And I want to be more involved with the Guild, too, in a more official capacity. So this gives me that opportunity. So Walter says, yeah, and in about two years' time, you're going to be president of the Guild. Ah, uh, no, of course. Never say never. Never. Wouldn't that be interesting? A man... As, a pres as the president of a guild that has all women in it. Uh, there is one other man in, man in this guild. Um, he comes with his mother sometimes, but haven't seen him in a while. This year he hasn't come to very many meetings. Um, someone said he got a new job or something and that was eating up a lot of his time. So, so basically there are two men in the guild and about 90 some women. So let's see. If I became president of the guild, hmm, a man's point of view on something like this? That might be interesting. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, what's coming up? All right, I've already mentioned this. Um, the Canadian Quilt Show is in Ottawa. Uh, starts on Wednesday. Well, I think it actually starts today, sort of a thing, but it, the part of it that's opened up to the public um, I think it starts on Wednesday and runs through to the weekend. Uh, so anyways, we're going. Uh, Walter got us a hotel room for two nights. Actually, it's not a hotel. It's the university's uh, residence. 
that we're staying in and we've done this kind of thing before in other places and really it's no frills no thrills uh but the price is like uh, well this is actually kind of expensive for a dormitory room kind of a thing it's about 130 dollars a night uh we stay at one in the summertime uh in out you know west of us ottawa is east of us um and uh, it costs about 90 bucks a night or something like that but it is ottawa la -di da uh, anyways, and it's close to what's called the Byway Market, which is a huge entertainment area of Ottawa with shops and restaurants and things like that. It really comes to life at night, kind of a deal. Um, so if you've never been to Ottawa, you have to go to the to the Byway Market. Um, it's not Byway, is it the Buy Market? Byway Market? No, I think it's Byway Market. Whatever. Um, or is it By Town Market? Hmm. Anyways, check out the market um so yeah we're looking forward to it so we're going to drive to ottawa ottawa is about four hours from where we live and uh we'll go get up in the morning and be up there around noon or so have lunch do the quilt show and then check in and uh into our room and probably explore the byway market and have dinner uh there and then the next day we're going off to the the national art gallery um, it's huge uh, in Ottawa. There's a lot of really nice uh, museums in Ottawa. The thing about Ottawa is I don't know if you still have to pay or they only do one day a week where all the national um, museums are free, which kind of irks me because in a lot of the cities we've been in around the world, uh, anything that's on the national level has usually been free unless there's been some really special display and they charge you a little bit of a, an admission price to see that special display. But most of them are free. So why does our country cheap out on this? I mean, after all, we pay a lot of money in taxes. You'd think they could cover uh, admission price into these places with that. But anyways, I'm not sure if that's the way it is or not. I guess we'll find out. So so a, so a little mini vacation kind of a thing. Um, we haven't been to Ottawa in quite a few years. Um, and Ottawa is a nice city uh, to visit, you know, especially when the weather's nice. If you're into biking and stuff like that, Ottawa has a fantastic bike trail system um, to go on. We did that one year with some friends, uh, and that's a long time ago when I still would have been able to get on a bike. I don't think I would bother getting on a bike now. You know, don't want hip surgery. Whatever. Okay, so that's coming up, so I'll try and take some video of that and put that into the vlog next week okay so that's the week um uh stephen and walter live will be on this coming sunday usual time four o'clock eastern standard time so i hope you'll join us then um this next week's topic okay just a little aside here <coughs> and excuse me for the cough um the last two lives well the one was almost live because we had that technical problem with youtube and last week both were on the theme to do with gay life um i don't want you to think that our new format is going to be all about gay issues it's not uh those were just those two weeks because it is gay pride month here so we were keeping with that theme um we've asked for people to make suggestions as to what we should discuss and our whole goal here is to create you know a two-way discussion uh in the live format um so we're just not the ones doing all the talking all the time um so we're looking for topics that of our interest to you to the viewers um we had several suggestions um, to talk about teaching and teachers, to talk about education, to talk about travel, um, like our experiences. All of these topics that we're going to talk about will come from our point of view, our experience with them. Um, we're not going to be getting into topics where we have to do a lot of research on them. We're just going to share our ideas and opinions about these various things and hope that that will engage people's interest. So anyways, next week's topic, not sure. Somebody wanted us to talk about retirement. And we're kind of playing with that idea. Um, people kind of want to know what it's like 
after you've spent 30, 40, 50 years of your life working and suddenly you're not working anymore, what that does. And actually, there is quite a bit about that that um, I didn't know until I actually became retired. So that might be what we'll talk about. Not sure. But anyways, we will be on the air at 4 p.m. next Sunday. So hope to see you then. Okay, so have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.